In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a very easy way to self host NNN on your local machine using the Docker desktop app. If you're not familiar with Docker, don't worry, I'll explain everything step by step. This is going to be completely no code solution, meaning that we're going to utilize the Docker desktop from start to finish. All right, let's get started. If you watched my previous video, I showed how to uh, self host NNN via NPM or node package manager uh, through the terminal. So in this one, I'm going to focus solely on Docker and the des desktop applications. So that way, if you don't know how to code or if you're not familiar with the terminal, this would be a really good way for you to host self host NNN onto your local computer using Docker. Self hosting has a lot of advantages. First, the fact that you will have complete control over your data. So if you're worried about um, privacy issues or if you're worried about leaking your data to third party app and you don't want to use the cloud account. So self hosting will be a great option for you. Um, so Docker is actually the preferred method uh, by the NNN community and a lot of other folks because it gives you a lot of advantages and control over how you can run and self host it along with other applications within next videos. I'll show how to do that as well. But anyways, so let me quickly explain what Docker is for those of you who are not familiar with it. If you're already familiar with it, please feel free to script this, but I just want to quickly introduce what Docker is and why this is so beneficial when it comes to self hosting NNN. So essentially Docker is just a platform and it's extremely popular uh, platform in the developer community that allows you to package application and all of their dependencies dependencies into one standardized units, which they refer to as containers. So you could think of it as a tool that packages all of your application like NNN and all of its dependencies, whatever it needs, all into one single unit called the containers. Again, NNN and all other applications have a lot of dependency that it comes with, such as libraries, uh, system tools and settings. So what Docker allows for you is to put all of that in one container or in one unit, and then you can basically deploy, deploy this and, and run it consistently across other platforms. So that way, if you want to self host yourself in a cloud account in a cloud provider, then you can do that and it will behave exactly just like it would be in your local machine. So when it comes to NNN and self hosting, the reason why Docker is so beneficial is because it really simplifies the process of getting NNN up and running and because it bundles all of the necessary components into one package. So that way you don't need to manually configure anything or worry about any kind of issues or environment environments uh, that you might run into. So that's what has a huge advantage when it comes to the simplicity and the process of running NNN on your local computer. And then another big advantage is the portability, meaning that um, when you deploy Docker in other environments, so let's say if you want to um, deploy it on a, another hosting platform, um, what this will do is will make sure that it consistently behaves the way it will behave in your local computer. And then another thing is the isolation of each container, meaning that these containers run independently of each other, uh, meaning that if, uh, if you have several operations or several application, NNN would operate in its own isolated environments. And Again, this uh, removes any conflicts or with other applications that might be running. So that's what gives it a huge advantage, ensuring it's really stable and reliable. And another big advantage is the escape scalability. So as you scale your operations in NNN, a Docker really will allow you to uh, scale and deploy multiple containers based on what your needs are, right? So this really makes it simple to handle increased workloads. And if you're creating complex uh, workflows and automation, this really allows you to be able to scale as you go without the need to configure or manually change any of the settings. So that was kind of the overall gist of what uh, Docker is and how that helps you when it comes to self hosting NNN. So let's go ahead and get started um, and install Docker application, the desktop application on our computer, and then we'll go ahead and run NNN through the Docker application. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go over to docker.com and you need to download it for your machine. So um, whatever you're using, whether you're using Windows, Linux or Mac, make sure you're downloading the correct version. One important thing, if you're using Mac, make sure you're the newer ones, especially the uh, M1, M2, M3 chips, make sure you're downloading this version and not the Intel chip because this is not going to work otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this 
it's going to download my application. So once you do that, you're going to go to your downloads and then double click on docker.dmg. And once you do that, it's going to ask you a few questions to install. And once you install that, then you can go over to your applications and then uh, initiate Docker. I've already done that. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Docker desktop application. All right. So once you do that, this is what it's going to look like. So this is their uh, desktop application. It has a really nice user interface. Let me get rid of that. All right, let me maximize this so that way you can see this really well. All right, perfect. So this is what the initial, it might give you some uh, tour, but go ahead and skip that. But you will have containers, images, volumes, builds. We're going to focus on images and containers. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and create a folder so that way we can put all of our NADN data into that folder. So that way uh, we can keep track of the data that we use. All right, so I'm going to go to my finder. So go to your homepage and right click new folder. And then we're going to call this NADN dash data. All right. So right now the folder is empty. All right, we're good to go here. Okay, so let's minimize this. So now I'm going to come to my images and we're going to go ahead and click on search images to run. So here what we're going to do is search for NADN IO slash NADN. I've already done that, but let's go ahead and do it. We're going to type N8N IO slash N8N. Okay. And the first one, as you can see right here, it says 100 million plus 293 stars. So make sure that you're downloading this image because otherwise it's going to give you some not downloading. Sorry, you're going to pull this. Um, so make sure that you're on the correct one. And I'm going to click on pull. And once you click on pull now, as you can see, it's loading. So now this is going to pull all of that data um, into your local desktop app and uh, it will be saved under the images tab. And again, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. So now that you have the correct image download here, so now you can see here it says the size and now on the right hand side here it says run. So for the first time when you click on run, we need to set a few optional settings. So once you click on run, it's going to open up this pop up where it says run a new container optional settings. So you're going to click on the right hand side here. You're going to put a container name because otherwise it will select a random name. So I'm just going to say N8N container dash container so that way I can recognize it. All right, so the host port, so this is where uh, you want to host on your local computer what port, which in a little bit I'll show you what that means. But for now, just put 5678 and this will map uh, this Docker container to your local port so that way you can access it through your um, local machine. And again, like I said, in a little bit, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so the volume, this is where you want N8N to um, store its data. So that way, if uh, the container is stopped or even it's deleted, then all of your data will persist. So this one, you're going to click on this uh, three dots here and you're going to go ahead and select um, the folder that you created, right? So earlier we went to our homepage and created this folder called NADN dash data. So you're just going to double click, select that and click on open. So for the container pad, you need to enter slash home slash node and then slash dot N8N. And then so what this does is this ensures that uh, the data, the data on your host machine is synced to and it ends directory inside the container of this uh, Docker container. So this basically ensures that all of the data is saved in the right in the correct area. OK, that's good. Environment variable. This is optional. So if you want to do any kind of authentication, this is where you will enter. So if you want to do that, you can go ahead and like, you know, use ChatGPT to put in uh, variables here, but I'm going to just leave it as it is. So now that we're done with that, all I have to do is click on run. And as soon as I do that, you can see now with breaking starts to the container tab and it runs all this stuff. And then on the bottom, as you can see now, it says editor is now accessible via localhost 5678. And this is exactly what we typed earlier, like the port for so the 5678, which means that now on the port in your local machine, the port 5678, you'll be able to have access to NADN. So I'm just going to copy this and go to a new tab. Come here on top and paste it. And there you go. So now you can uh, set up your email account. So as soon as you uh, paste that in your local machine, you'll, it, will, it will take you to the form where now you will have to set up a new, new username and password. And again, this has nothing to do with your 
uh, cloud account so therefore there is no migration here so go ahead and enter your information i'm gonna go ahead and enter mine okay so once you do that click on next and now you have to just customize the end it'll just ask you a few questions go through it software as a service have you uh, i'm just gonna say oh whatever it doesn't really matter myself it's fine google get started all right so now it presents you the blank workflows and again it's the same environment or the same user interface just like if you were to access from your cloud account you have your templates over here you have your account uh, you have nadn your credentials and start from scratch means that now you can just jump into your workflow and again same thing you have the ability to access everything from your local host here um, your advanced ai's ai agents whatever you need all of this will be accessed uh, one thing is if you want to import your workflows from your cloud account go to your cloud account come to the top right hand corner here and you're going to click on download and then you can come back here and click on import from file and then you'll just basically select that downloaded json file and then that will import all of your workflows here and then obviously you have to um, add your credentials because it's not going to migrate over the credentials because now you're using your local machine to run everything and that's pretty much it so if you already have a bunch of workflows on your cloud account you can migrate them over very easily all right so now let's go ahead and actually uh, stop this so that way you see um, how that works as well so now if you are done with your workflows and you want to stop uh, the container that's running all you have to do is come to the container and then right here it says stop click on this and it says stopping n8n as you can see in the bottom here and it stopped and as you can see now there's that option of play button that appears so now if we go back to our local host and refresh this or enter this again reload now it says that this site can't be reached because obviously our um, and end container is not running so if you want to run it again you'll come back click on start and now it says running right so go back to your app and reload and there you go so that's that's kind of the beauty of kind of setting it up once for your account so that way you're not going to be able to you don't have to log in there again because we didn't set any kind of authentication um, so this just makes the process really really smooth so on the next uh, tutorial what I'm going to do is go through uh, setting up the self-hosted AI starter kit so this is going to be basically similar to what we did earlier but now we're going to use our um, command line uh, because we'll be able to install everything within our local machine including Olama and Quadrant which Olama is um, a software that gives you the ability to run um, and interact with large language models that are open source like Meta AI's Llama languages on your local machine we can actually download these large language models on our local machine and through um, Llama we'll be able to interact with them and then also Quadrant is another vector store database uh, that you can self host and be able to therefore interact with everything within your local environment so we'll go ahead and do that tutorial next because this will give you like an entire package uh, for self-hosting your AI workflows. All right, well, hopefully you found this helpful. Again, this is a super easy way to uh, set up and run and then through your local machine without the need to ever touch the terminal or put any kind of code because a desktop version of Docker is amazing. It just really gives you a great user interface to be able to interact with it and stop or uh, start your container every time you want to run and it end from your local machine all right well thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and like the video because there's a lot of upcoming great tutorials that i have in mind if you have any particular automation or tutorial that you want me to do please go ahead and put it in the comments below and i'll see you on the next one